Now, what he's going to say here is something actually that is quite wonderful. That is that you and I can have fellowship with God. There is a possibility of a man having fellowship with God, and that's one of the most glorious prospects that's before us today, that you and I can have fellowship with God. Now, will you listen to him? Verse 3 now. That which we have seen and heard. That's the third time he's told us this, and I hope now it sort of percolated through to us that he had heard him and had seen him. We declare unto you. Now, why, John, are you telling us all about this? That ye also may have fellowship with us. Now, believers can have fellowship one with another. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. How are we going to have fellowship with God? Well, the only way we can have fellowship with God is for us to know Jesus Christ. That's the only way that we can. And it does present a dilemma. God is holy. Man is unholy. We are not holy people. But how can this gulf be bridged? How can you bring God and man together? Or, as we saw Amos put it, how can two walk together except they be agreed? How are we going to have fellowship? Well, to get over this impossible hurdle, John is going to present three methods. Two of them are man-made methods that won't work, and only one will work, and that will be God's method. And we're going to see that. Now, before we get to that, let me say just a word here about this word fellowship. Now, I've talked about this word before because it's such an important word. Fellowship. What is fellowship? Well, it's the Greek word koinonia. And that means what you have in common. That is what you can share together. It means for a believer that if we are to have fellowship with John and fellowship one with another, and you and I to have fellowship on this radio, it means we have to share the things of Christ. And that is the only way that you can have fellowship. Now, that means that you and I must know the Lord Jesus. And we must not just know about him, but we must know him as our personal Savior. What is this thing then called fellowship? Well, again, let me tell this story. We have dragged this word down in the mire today, and it means nothing in the world but going to a dinner and maybe a banquet in the church and patting somebody on the back and say, how you feel? That's fellowship. Well, that's not fellowship. And several years ago, I used to go down to Huntington Beach here in Southern California and speak at the Rotary Club. They had a very wonderful doctor who was the program chairman, and he told me that they could probably take me once a year. He'd either invite me at Christmas or at some other time, which would be Easter. And he said, give them both barrels, and I generally tried to give them both barrels. And since he's no longer program chairman, they don't have me back, I can tell you that. I'm not very popular on the banquet circuit, by the way, because they want to have a good time whether they're Christian or non-Christian at banquets. They don't want the Word of God just spread right out for them. And the thing I noticed at this place where they met, they had a big banner up over the speaker's table, and the speaker's table was elevated. And on this banner, the motto was, Food, Fun, Fellowship. Well, I want to tell you, the food wasn't anything to brag about. I shouldn't complain dinner didn't cost me anything. I don't think I'd wanted to pay anything for it. It was embalmed chicken with peas as big as bullets, and that was the lunch that we had. And then the fun, well, it was corny jokes like I tell. That's not too much fun, I guess. But then the fellowship, as best I could make out, was... This man greeting another man, and he pats him on the back, and he says, Bill, how's business? 
And then Bill answers back that business is good. And he says, how's your business? Fine. And somebody else says, well, how's the wife? You know, that's fellowship. And then they sing a little song together. And I'll be honest with you, I don't see the thrill in that type of a meeting, but I'm not criticizing because I don't belong to the knife and fork circuit at all. But that was the sum and substance of the meeting. Well, that's not fellowship, friends. And it's not fellowship when you hear an announcement made from the pulpit, come to our dinner, we're going to have good food and we're going to have a lot of fellowship. Well, what in the world do they have? Just meet around the table and talk to each other about everything under the sun, except the one thing that gives us fellowship. And that means to meet around the person of Christ. Now, let me give an illustration of the one place where they use it correctly. I had the privilege of being at Oxford University. Just as a tourist going through, looking at everything, I saw the quad and all of that. I saw Wren's Tower there. And Oxford is made up of different schools. And they got one school there where you can study Shakespeare. Now, suppose that you wanted to know all about Shakespeare. You wanted to teach it, probably. You'd go to Oxford, and you'd go to that particular college where they specialize in that. Well, when you got there, you went and sat down at the board, and we saw where they eat in each one of these colleges. And you meet the man, the professors eat there, and you talk with each other. And you hear them talking about Shakespeare in a way that you never knew before. For instance, you and I thought that Romeo and Juliet, that she was just the only girl that he ever went with. And when Romeo made the statement, the all-seeing son has never seen her like since first the world begun, that he was really talking about Juliet. And did you know that that fickle fellow Romeo was talking about another girl when he said that? And you thought, my, there's a lot about Shakespeare that I don't know. So you begin to study. You pull books down off the shelf in the library. You go to the lectures. And after you've been there a while, that is a couple of years, maybe three years, they make you a fellow. And now you go in and sit down at the board, and they talk about the sonnets of Shakespeare. And you are right in there with them because you read them now, and you know Shakespeare, and you can have fellowship with them. Now, fellowship for a believer means that we meet and share the things of Christ. In fact, this Bible study we have together here each day, I trust is a fellowship with many of you. As we talk about the Lord Jesus and about his word, we trust that you enter into it and that it becomes meaningful to you and that you and I share the things of Christ. We can have fellowship one with another when we share the things of Christ, and we can have fellowship with him. And I think right now, and I mean this, right now, I think that he's listening in to us and that he's watching you and me both. And he's saying, McGee, why don't you do a better job than you're doing? You're not presenting it maybe as wonderful as it should be. And I do say, I wish I could present him in a more wonderful way. Because, friends, that's one of his names. He's wonderful, and he's the only one we ought to use the word wonderful with. All right? Now, that's what we have.